start the webinar, which is devoted to typical mistakes of beginners and club players. Of course, we are waiting for more attendees to come. Uh, let me check if the video and uh, audio quality is good. You can also type a plus sign if everything is correct and you can uh, hear me properly. I'm streaming this webinar on uh, Twitch and YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe to my Twitch and YouTube platforms. So today we are going to talk about mistakes. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, you probably uh, found my article. What uh, my typical mistakes are. However, my typical mistakes are actually different from what uh, beginners and club players make. So I have two mistakes. I overestimate my position. And the second one is that I, uh, in unfamiliar positions, I choose the wrong plan. This is actually a critical mistake and this is what I'm working on. So I'm trying to uh, become more comfortable with the positions I get. For example, if uh, I play a certain opening, I should be quite familiar with typical positions that uh, arise after the first uh, 10 to 15 moves. However, there is, there is always a risk that your opponent deviate and you have to adapt to it. Okay, so we're still waiting uh, while people uh, join in the webinar. Okay. Okay, so John recently joined um, the webinar. Thank you, John, for coming. Uh, you uh, missed some of our previous webinars and actually next time, next, uh, well, actually next week, guys, um, you remember I told you um, my friend and I uh, are running an online chess school. And uh, next uh, Sunday, I think we will announce a masterclass of one of our coaches. I'll let you know, so please follow my announcement. Um, I am, no, I, uh, well, this uh, guy, a feeder master, uh, our coach from Bulgaria, uh, will be uh, uh, explaining of how to attack properly, how to attack in different uh, positions when the king is uncastled, when the king is on the king side, when the king is on the queen side, and so on. Uh, well, he will also share some uh, guidelines of how to attack and actually what to take into account before you take a decision of which move to play on the board. And I will be assisting him on this webinar. Okay. So let's continue and actually let's start the webinar. So I have a list of typical mistakes. I can just uh, uh, read this list for you. Well, the most common mistakes among beginners is just thinking about your own moves when you do not expect your opponent to play something um, as a response. So you only think, okay, I play this and my position is good. But no, you should always predict what your opponent is going to play. You may make a mistake. For example, you predict you predicted this move, but your opponent played that move. It's okay. But 
you should definitely think about their next move and um, when you get more experience you are most likely to guess it properly the second one is uh, creating traps uh, well creating traps is not a mistake actually but if this is a bad trap so for example you uh, create a trap and if your opponent got into this trap you win the game or maybe you win the some material but if he doesn't get tra trapped then you your position becomes worse or you even lose the game this is what i don't want you to do so bad threats are prohibited but uh, believe me even uh, even me sometimes uh, create a trap hoping my opponent makes a mistake uh, well usually it's a good trap if he gets into this trap he loses and if not then my position is still okay but sometimes especially when i when i'm playing blitz and have not so much time on my clock i create such bad traps and everyone does it but you should decrease the number of such traps in your, in your game well, number three is playing without a plan. So it's better to play with a wrong plan rather than playing without a plan. When you just play random moves, you are unlikely to uh, coordinate all of your pieces. Number four is to focus on the attack only. Well, this is mainly for beginners. Uh, so when you choose a plan you should understand that the attack may work or may not and there are some preconditions that you probably learned from one of our webinars and these preconditions indicate us that you may apply a kingside attack but uh, well if you don't see such preconditions then you should focus on something else play in the center play on the queen side Try to create weaknesses into the enemy camp, improve your pieces, and so on. Well, uh, beginners also neglect uh, development of their pieces. This is true, and uh, this is where you should remember. And uh, well, uh, well, you should call back to your memory and uh, remember the games uh, played by Paul Murphy. Paul Murphy was able to coordinate all of his pieces sometimes well it's actually he is a legendary player he was a legendary player but uh well sometimes he didn't play the best way he didn't choose the best moves uh, now we see it because of the engines but um, this um, the moves that he chose uh, were quite logical he tried to interact with all of his pieces especially when some of the enemy pieces were Mm, uh, locked out or you are not participating in the game so coordination of all of your pieces can offer some advantage for you it's even okay to sacrifice one or two pawns but to activate your pieces like um, for example uh, many of you have heard about smith Moore gambit uh, c3 d takes c3 and uh, knight c3 so it's a pawn sacrifice in order to develop pieces faster okay let me check something uh actually my sound settings i don't want these sounds to be available anymore okay i can change it okay well yeah so uh or maybe you've heard about central gambit bishop c4 like that uh, nowadays we understand that too many pawns are sacrificed and if black plays properly it doesn't work but it was actually quite common uh, in the uh, 19th century it's called danish gambit okay uh what else uh just uh, well just a few people i mean well i can't say like that but uh the ability to play end game uh comes with more experience and 
maybe you've heard that Soviet coaches, no, the coaches in Soviet Union, uh, told their students that they should start studying chess from the end games. Uh, well, my opinion uh, differs from what they said. Uh, why? Because I think uh, when you pass the game into the end game, uh, you can uh, be already up the material. And then actually it doesn't matter how good you are. If you can, if you have extra piece, you win the game. And it's uh, quite often when beginners uh, play and end the game in the middle game. Actually, I myself prefer to um, to finish the game in the middle game with a checkmate or a combination after which my opponent resigns. But yeah, of course, I have to pass the game to the end game sometimes. And uh, the, the ability to play these in games is quite important, uh, but uh, not at the early stage of studying chess. So the mistake that uh, most uh, students, especially beginners, make in the end game is not to activate the king. So this is what you should do. Centralize the king, try to use it as an ordinary piece. Uh, the king's power is um, similar to the rook. So if we, um, if we try to value the king in the end game, it costs five, five pawns as the strength of the rook. Uh, well, number seven is mistake. Number seven is underestimating your opponent when you think that your opponent is a well lower rated player. You expect him to make a mistake, but you shouldn't. You should uh, think you're playing against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, when I was younger, I was saying against Gary Kasparov, but now we understand Magnus is better. Well, and uh, some people still play too fast. If you have a lot of time on your clock, please spend it. At, uh, playing too fast is a typical mistake of um, kids, actually. So as for adults, they play, um, they play, uh, they try to play slower. But I still have some students who play a thirty minutes game, but at the same time uh, play it as it is a blitz game. Well. I was talking too much. Let's now uh, focus on the game analysis. Uh, if you remember, I asked you to send the games and only a few uh, sent their games in PGN. So that's why we start with the game that was sent by Mark uh, 4K83. Uh, well, let's uh, look at the game quickly d4 d5 e4 e6 so e4 in this position e6 knight c3 bishop b4 bishop d3 knight f6 4k is playing with white pieces e5 knight fd7 a3 bishop is 7 knight h3 castle castle c5 so you see almost every move is marked with a mistake and starting from this moment uh, white uh, started losing the position. So let's analyze what were the mistakes. Well, I don't understand why e4 was played. Probably it was a home preparation. e6, knight c3, bishop b4, and now we have Vinava variation. Bishop d3 is a possible move. Knight f6 is a mistake, but okay, it's fine. e5 is a very good move. Knight d7, and now what happens? So uh, one of the mistakes uh, that uh, Mark uh, made in this position, uh, he didn't understand the typical plan. He may play a3 and this is what he did. Another uh, idea, well, actually, uh, w it's a French defense. And in French defense, uh, black is about to undermine our center and our task is to reinforce it. So here, for example, if speaking about the concrete idea, queen g4 is, of course, the best move to pressure the pawn on um, g7 because castling is unavailable. After queen g4 and castling, it's bishop h6, gaining the material. So queen g4 provokes g6, and g6 already weakens the dark squares here on the king side. That's why that was the best move. But uh, if you understand how to play... Uh, 
if you know how to play French defense with white, you should remember that the main task is to keep a strong pawn center because black is about to undermine it. So such moves like knight c2 with the idea of c3, not, not right now because there is a pin. So if you play a3 and the bishop retreats, that makes sense. Or play f4, c5 and continue with knight d4, knight f3, bishop e3. At least it makes sense. You reinforce the pawn on e5, so what means you may exchange the pawn on d4 and support it with um, support the square with your bishop and with your queen. a3 is okay move. Uh, bishop e7. Now what? Their next move is c5. This is what every um, French uh, defense player would play. So. In order to save the pawn, the best thing black can, white can do here is to build the pawn chain, c3, d4, e2. While the bishop is already on d3, knight c, e2 looks really good. c5, c3, and c4 isn't a problem because the bishop comes to c2. Another thing, f4, c5, knight f3. C4 this time isn't a big problem. The bishop comes to e2, for example. If c takes d4, knight takes d4, and it's still okay. Well, knight c6, bishop e3, probably. Okay, uh, so b knight h3, what for? Uh, okay, I have no idea. So maybe it was uh, white wanted to push the pawn. Castle, castle. C5 finally was played. How to play in this position? Well, I would continue with f4 still. f4, she takes d4, knight comes there. At least I secure this pawn and then I threaten to take the pawn on d4. Well, queen h5 is a good move here, but no, queen h5 was played on the board, but this is where I think white um, didn't think about uh, the next move of black. So now, uh, please listen very carefully. Uh, please pay as much attention as you can. I'm going to share with some insight uh, how to take decisions in chess about uh, your next move. Well, first of all, you look at what your opponent played. They played c5 and you ask yourself what my opponent wants to do with this move. Then you decide for yourself if uh, the thing that your opponent is going to do is dangerous for you and you should play a defensive move, or you may ignore and continue with your plan. So, for example, if you play queen h5, you threaten in a mate, uh, that's why he has no time to capture on d4. So, in this uh, case, queen h5 is okay, c takes d4 is not a big threat, especially if you threaten a mate on h7. Uh, well, now now when you understand this threat, you uh, should consider at least three moves candidates, candidate moves. Uh, it can be two or four or five, but tr at least try to uh, think about three different moves candidates. Well, queen h5 threatening the mate is definitely one of them. What else? In this position, I would consider such moves like f4 to support the pawn, because if d4 is lost, I don't want to lose the e e5 pawn. So, c okay, so f4 is the second move candidate. Well, uh, what is the third one? Well, maybe bishop h7. Or maybe it's uh, bishop e3. So, we have these, 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 and bishop h7. So these are four moves candidates that I would consider in this position. And your task is to predict what your opponent gonna play on the next move. For, for example, if you choose f4, they are most likely to capture there, threatening your knight. You move your knight either to b5 or to e2. I, I think e2 works better. Their next move is this. And then, uh, well, 
I have no ideas. Maybe you should play b4 and then bishop b2 to gain the pawn back. That makes sense. So, for example, uh, f4, c takes d4, knight e2, knight c6, and then b4. You threaten to chase the knight away and capture the pawn, so they have to play a6. You play bishop b2 and threaten to take the pawn. Well, I'm not sure if the pawn is... Well, actually, the pawn should be lost. Yeah, you are able to gain the material, you have a better pieces, you have uh, more centralization, you dominate in the center, white should be better in this position. So this option is affordable. What else? Uh, well, bishop h7 requires calculation. King takes h7, queen h5 check, king g8, and how to play then? We sacrifice the piece. Uh, well, knight g5, bishop g5. Bishop takes g5, queen, for example, to b6. And uh, then I don't see a strong attack which allows uh, white to succeed. f4, rook f3 should be played, but I don't see a concrete way of how to deliver a checkmate or gain at least one minor piece back. That's why I would refuse a bishop h7. Uh, what else? Uh, bishop e3, uh, c takes d4, bishop takes d4, and knight c6. Both the bishop and uh, the pawn on e5 are hanging, so bishop e3 is not a good option. Queen h5, which move to expect after queen h5? There are two options, f5 and g6. Uh, well, oh, which are quite typical, and I don't believe that h6. First of all, h6 is not a tempo move. Second, bishop h6 sacrifice can be played which is uh, quite dangerous. So white is okay with uh, queen h5, h6, uh, but white should calculate queen h5, g6, or queen h5, uh, f5. So let's say g6 first. Uh, g6 weakens the h6 square, and probably you can somehow deliver a checkmate there. For example, queen h6, they capture on d4, you play knight g5, threatening the mate, so bishop g5 is obligatory, bishop takes g5. Well, and this is unclear position, the queen, for example, has to move, but if the queen moves, you have bishop f6, and then uh, even if knight takes, pawn takes, nobody stops a checkmate on g7. So, queen h5, g6, queen h6, uh, then... Uh, c takes d4 and knight g5 bishop g5 bishop takes g5 f6 should be played in this position uh, but uh, f6 weakens the g6 so bishop takes g6 threatening the mate h takes g6 queen takes g6 check king h8 and then first you may capture there and activate your rook this is where the enemy king is in uh, trouble plus there is a strong strong pin here I'm going to demonstrate it uh, later on the board. So I think white uh, here has a compensation. Two pawns, well, one pawn, but the d4 pawn dies, uh, no worries. Uh, one pawn and, uh, well, not rookie one, of course. Uh, one pawn is a compensation, but there is a strong attack on the king. And at least there is a perpetual check, actually. So, for example, if you miscalculated something and you don't see a victory after that, just uh, repeat the position with a perpetual check and agree to a draw. So, queen h5 and g6 is fine. Queen h5, f5. What about this move? Well, this is uh, the best option, but you can still continue with knight g5. Bishop g5, bishop takes g5, queen b6. But this time knight e4 simplifies the position. And you end up without any material losses. And you also have a bishop for a knight. You can, uh, with the bishop on g5, you can play bishop e7, fork if needed. So, yeah. Uh, queen h5 is a good move. Uh, well, but... Uh, uh, here, Mark playing with uh, white pieces uh, after queen h5, which he did, didn't expect his opponent to play g6 and uh, didn't calculate the line properly. So, here, of course, queen h6 to threaten the mate. If you play such a move, you should continue the attack. 
but not queen g4. Queen g4 is a typical mistake because queen g4 looks like a good way to retreat your uh, queen, but at the same time this move loses the game. Why? Because the center is now ruined. Uh, you lose your... I mean, white loses their path of their attack and c takes d4 knight c6 should be played then the other central pawn dies and without the center without the control over e5 a wise attack is unlikely to succeed so the line i'm talking about is queen h6 c takes d4 knight g5 threatening the mate bishop g5 bishop g5 if uh, queen moves away it's bishop f6 and there is no defense so that's why f6 here, but bishop g6, threatening the mate, that's why you at least have a perpetual check. But you may take there, well, you're threatening with f7 and then queen h6 mate. So queen g7 is another threat, so that's why knight f6 should be done. And in this position, uh, well, the knight is hanging, but maybe it's not a big problem. So this move, and in case of d takes c3, rook a3 with rook h3, looks like a winning position. For example, e5 to stop uh, rook h3, uh, to stop rook h3, but rook g3, now you're threatening to play this and take there. And I don't see any defense. So let's say queen e7. But uh, bishop f6 now, because if rook f6 it's queen g8, and if queen f6 it's just queen h5, a line mate. So queen h6 worked pretty well. Uh, the other option is f5 instead of g6, which also was okay. Knight g5, bishop g5, bishop g5, queen b6. And in this position, if you remember, I told knight a4. Well, knight a4 is the best move according to the engine um, so knight a4 the queen moves you may capture there or you may depends on where the queen moves for example queen has to go there otherwise you place bishop e7 then you take knight takes and here well if you take it's fine but there is an intermediate move so you gain a pawn with it Uh, well, so queen h5 is a good move, but uh, queen g4, this is where white neglected the next move that black gonna play. And black uh, took the advantage of this mistake, captured two pawns. So here you see again, it's better to move the queen to f4 or e3 to not fall under knight e5, but it was queen g4. Now the game is lost. There is nothing to talk about. Uh, well, white tried to obtain some counterplay, but you see b6 is played. What's the idea of b6? Why white is not asking themselves? Why did uh, black play this move? What's the idea to play bishop a6? They cannot uh, play it right away, but they can do it after knight c5. So probably b4 to stop it. Maybe rook e1, but f4 was played, knight c5. Okay, now they can play bishop a6. Queen e2, bishop a6, and you have to play knight b5, looks suspicious because of the pin. So it's better to move the queen away, let's say to g3, or maybe to f3, but not to e2. Well, and then white uh, lost the game. Bishop f2, yeah. It's the only move. Here, knight should take. And in this position, there was a last mistake. It's knight e4. After d3, it's a discovered attack. So when white played knight e4, what were they th expecting black to play? Well, of course, it doesn't mean uh, the queen is lost because, well, yeah, knight c5. Ah. Well, yes, it's a losing position anyway. And just here, what, uh, rook d1 works, rook c2 is good. Move by move, uh, well, uh, they pass the game into absolutely winning end game with two extra pawns. Okay, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, well, I, no, I'm reading your comments. Thank you. 
Uh, well, the next game uh, is a game of my student um, uh, from my student living in Australia. His name is Peter. Well, this is his tournament game, and uh, he was able to outplay his opponent three times in the game, but finally lost. So three times he had a worse position, but managed to outplay him and get absolutely winning. But finally missed something in the end game and lost. Well, let's look because this uh, game illustrates several mistakes. C4, A6. So, Knight C6. Well, is a possible move if you stick to Count Sicilian. You should continue with Queen C7. So this is where Peter understands everything perfectly. Uh, then D5. Why not? Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe it was something better here, like d6 or knight h5, but d5 is definitely a logical move. Opening up the position, leaving uh, white with a backward pawn on the d file is what uh, black actually wants to achieve. It takes d5, it takes d5, and uh, then white plays d4. Okay, now please tell me which moves to calculate here as black. What are your candidate moves, in other words? Okay. C takes D4, D takes C4, and Knight D5. Well, ah. Uh... Ah, bishop g4. Well, knight d5, probably knight d4. This is what you mean. So, uh, well, two moves candidates are definitely exchangers. Because with d4, he created a kind of a counterplay. White wanted a counterplay with the exchanges in the center. So we should analyze these direct variations where we capture. Well, d takes c4 doesn't look good because it's not obligatory for them to capture right away. They can continue with d5. And after knight retreats d6, the bishop is trapped. So d takes c4 isn't a good move. c takes d4 maybe, but after knight d4, how to play? Exchange and then capture on c4? Well, maybe, but it only simplifies the position. And, uh, well, it's equal. If black plays for a win, they should play something uh, else. Uh, another move candidate here is bishop e6 to support the position. And with bishop e6, you actually create a threat. You create a threat of d takes c4, gaining the pawn for free. Uh, that's why after this move, well, we should consider c takes d5, after which you capture and activate your queen or your bishop. The position should be good. Well, uh, yeah. If something like that, you can either capture there, you can capture there, or you can push d4. Everything is okay. Maybe d4 is even best because, uh, well, these two pawns are not so important. So you can even continue with maybe knight e4 and still capture there. Okay, uh, so fine. Bishop e6 is a move candidate. What did uh, Peter do in this position? He took on d4 and then he played bishop e6. Well, what, what's the logic of this move? It looks like uh, black just wanted to activate their bishop and didn't find a better spot and considered that on e6 the bishop can support the pawn. But... Uh, there is a knight that can be exchanged for that bishop, and you know bishops are better than knights. Ah.
Uh, there was a good comment. I'll get back to it uh, just a little bit later. So, uh, well, if this move is played, F takes e6, and the pawn on e6 is a weakness. The, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, there is a good comment. After bishop e6 in this position, d takes c5, and I suggested to continue with d4. That was probably not the best move, knight uh, a4, knight e4, knight b6, and uh, in this position I think uh, rook a7. Rook a7. Well, knight c5 deserves attention, but let's say rook a7, uh, well, the rook is not well placed, but after we capture on c5 with the bishop, with the bishop, uh, then uh, the rook can be activated to g7 somehow later. So it shouldn't be a big problem, but maybe after bishop e6 and uh, uh, d takes c5, you'd better just take on uh, c5 with your bishop. Or maybe on c4. Both lines are fine for you. For black, I mean. Okay, so bishop g5 was played in the game. Uh, this is where uh, black should ask themselves. What's the point of bishop g5 move? And the answer is, with this move, they pressure here with the idea to take on d5. What are your moves candidates in this position as black. So what are your suggestions? D takes C4. Well, uh, why do you suggest D takes C4? This is actually what Peter played. And in my opinion, this is a critical mistake. I, I just realized actually that I connected my Twitch account to my profile. So, and if you want to follow my uh, Twitch streams, you can just do it on uh, my profile on chess.com. So, guys, if you just click on this link, this is my profile, you'll see my stream. Okay, so h6, knight e4, c takes d4, knight e6. Well, yes, c takes d4 is a mistake uh, because of uh, what Eric uh, said. Uh, I mean, d takes c4 is a mistake because of knight e6, f takes e6, and bishop takes c4. The pawn on e6 is a weakness. This is what happened in the game, and that's the reason why uh, from a completely winning position, black got a completely losing position. Let me explain. So moves candidates here are, uh, well, d takes c4, knight e6, we, we refuse it immediately. Uh, knight d4, because we value our bishop on e6. We don't want their knight to get uh, to be exchanged for the bishop. So knight d4 is a move candidate. What else? Well, uh, actually h6 maybe, but h6, uh, bishop takes there. Bishop takes there, you're threatening to take. They probably exchange on e6 and then take on d5. And you have to capture on c3, which I don't want you to do. And finally, you still end up with an isolated pawn on d5. It's not so bad, it's approximately equal. But before that, 
your position was winning. Well, knight e4 is another move to analyze here, of course. Uh, knight e4. Uh, knight e4. And if they play this move, you can capture with the bishop. Well, that makes sense. What I don't like about knight e4 is uh, bishop e7, knight e7, knight takes e4, d takes e4, and both e pawns are weak. For example, bishop g4, they also will attack the pawn on the e4, and, uh, well, black is in the trouble. Well, knight d4, and uh, after queen takes, actually, there is nothing they can do. They have to take with the queen, because if not, you take on e2 with a check. So queen d4, and with d takes c4, you just gain a pawn. You see? Bishop c4 cannot be played. The queen on d4 is hanging, and black, white first has to exchange it. And then they realize that actually, because of this bishop, they have no resources to capture on e c4 anymore. So with this move, uh, knight d4 and d takes c4, black could just gain a pawn for free. Here, the... A main mistake was just a miscalculation. Uh, black didn't calculate all lines properly and instead chose d takes c4. This is where they are in a trouble. Knight d8. So finally, they exchange everything. And, uh, no, not everything, but uh, queens and some other pieces. Uh, well, the bishop for a knight, uh, but extra pawn for white. Well, I would say white is better, but with good chances for black to draw the game. Now, let's look what happened then. Uh, well, white offers an exchange. Of course, it's not a good idea to accept. That's why black uh, moves the rook out. King e2. Well, this is where I think uh, activating the king is a good idea. King to g8, king f7, king e6, so on. Uh, and uh, try to use a chance to enter the second rank if possible. Uh, Peter played in a different way, but he has a concrete idea. He played b4, forcing the knight to get to the edge to protect the pawn on b2. And he, then he played king g8, which is a good move. Rook d1. Well, and uh, uh, this is where uh, black made another mistake. I can, uh, make, I can call it a loss of reference points in the game. So when you, well, sometimes you understand how you should play the end game, which side to play, which pieces to attack, uh, but uh, sometimes not. For example, kids are looking for a checkmate in the end game, but no, it's impossible. It's impossible to deliver a checkmate with just a few pieces. You should be very lucky to achieve it. So delivering, uh, trying to deliver a checkmate in this position is a mistake. And uh, something like that with the idea to enter the second rank and then activating the king is a good plan. Peter played rook e8, king d2 and bishop g5. And after king d3, rook d8, instead of moving the king to e2 to not uh, let uh, black to get to the second rank, they played king c2. Well, this move still makes sense, rook e2, and in this position... Uh, white shouldn't just allow black to continue with this. For example, either king d3 back or, well, well, rook d5 attacking the bishop. So now this is not a good idea because after king d1 both pieces are hanging. So rook d5 with a temper and then king d1 controlling the e2. This is where white is winning. But they played king b3. They also lost... Uh, a reference points in the end game. Rook enters the second rank to capture the se no, to capture these second ranks. Well, Rook F1 is too passive, but possible. Rook F1, Bishop E7, and I don't see what White can do to play for a win. Instead, they took there, and after Rook F2, White is uh, White lost all their advantage. Rook comes to G1, and this is where. Uh, Peter plays the best move he could find. It's bishop e3, preparing a discovered attack. Well, 
the rook should be moved to to a different spot let's say h1 for example here or the king should move to b3 or c3 where it cannot be checked but white played king a5 what do you think how uh, black should play in th at this moment Well, yes, of course, everybody tells the right answer. No, probably you mean uh, Rook F5. Yeah, uh, Rook F5, of course. Of course, Rook F5. Rook F5 with a check after which you can capture the Rook. Well, but this is what wasn't played in the game. Instead, black captured on b2 to gain a pawn and exchange rooks. Well, gaining the material is always good, but this is where uh, black violated their uh, algorithm of how to find the move. They just forgot to think about m candidate moves. So, rook b2 is one of the candidate moves and if you consider only one always ask yourself if there is something you can do better if there is a move that you can play and that offers a better position for you and of course it's rook f5 a natural check moreover the position becomes sharp and black should be looking for uh, forcing moves such uh, moves are checks captures and threats three types of moves and uh, here of course Checks should oh, actually, of course, checks should be calculated first. Well, uh, uh, I no, black had enough time in this position, but uh, rook b2 uh, they played because they just didn't look at anything else. Uh, such uh, logic is possible if you see that this move that you are analyzing leads to absolutely winning position. For example, let me slightly change the position. Let's say the position would be like that. And this is where, well, you can of course play this move, but rook b2 deserves attention uh, and leads to a winning position. King takes, bishop takes g1, and uh, well, with uh, three pawns versus one, you win. So if you see rook b2 is winning, you may play such a move. But if you see that the position is still unclear after you uh, capture on b2, then instead of instead of taking on b2, you should analyze if there is something better than this move. Well, okay, this move was played. Well, now uh, black centralized their king. So they are, now they are playing for a draw. Their task is to capture the pawns and sacrifice the bishop for the a pawn. However, th somehow they managed to win. Well, actually, no, it's it's a draw. H5 here is a mistake. The best move was bishop e5, and then h5, h4 should be played. But at uh, some moment they were winning actually. H5 was played, knight d4, h4 and knight c2 was played now black is winning 
but after h4 actually white wins can you please tell me how white wins in this position there is something they can do to stop uh, to prevent the pawn from promotion and promote their a pawn first try to find it Well, a5 and if uh, h3, then what? Okay, guys, who knows? Uh, <laughs> there is only one move that allows, uh, well, actually two moves, but only one plan which allows white to win the game. Who can guess? It's a very nice move. No, no ideas. Okay, let me just explain. It's knight f3. How is it possible? It's the knight loss, right? The knight is able to stop the pawn on um, h2. Well, you can start with a5 and after h3 play this move. Or you can play this move right away. The main idea is that this knight stops the pawn and if black gets rid of this uh, knight then the king is located on the square where it can be easily checked. Black promotes first but white promotes with a check and unfortunately for them the king and the queen are located on one diagonal. So you see knight f3 works. Yeah. Good. So knight c2 was played instead knight c2 is a winning move after which you king f4 right that was a good move knight d4 h3 knight e2 check and in the game black just played king f3 uh, without any ideas of what white gonna do so same mistake black neglected the next move white gonna do and of course we understand that after king f3 it's knight g1 fork and the a pawn is promoted which actually happened in the game that's why you should be looking for such moves that doesn't allow the knight to either check the king or to attack one of these two squares such move can be just knight g4 so to stop uh, the pawn the knight should be located here or here but you can only do it through the g3 square but on g3 the king is able to capture it and this is how uh, peter could win but unfortunately uh, lost because of his mistake king f3 which was which was just a simple mistake you see he was doing so many strong moves uh, to win this position so bishop e3 for example is a good move well not here with the rooks on the board uh, this pieces activity was a good idea so he managed to outplay his opponent but just lost because violated the procedure of how to take um how to take decision when you are trying to find the, the move to play so you should choose between candidates move and always predict your opponent to play something well the other important mistake that uh, most of you do and uh, even uh, sometimes i make such a mistake it's uh, material exchange you know when you are down the material you shouldn't exchange pieces 
if only you obtain some advantage after that so actually well exchanging pieces is in favor of uh, for those who have extra material and uh, if you are better i mean if your position is better and you decide to exchange uh, you are likely to lose your advantage you but if you exchange the pieces for example your bad piece to the enemy good piece it it's of course good but if you exchange equal pieces the position gets simplified and you may lose your advantage which actually happened uh, in the game of my student douglas um, douglas learned how to play pulse on sicilian knight c6 well it's a good move actually it deserves this mark uh, uh, from my um, course that i published on my website and uh, managed to get a better position so you see knight c3 queen c7 bishop e3 a6 bishop d3 this is where you should have you should play knight f6 then b5 and so on but he played bishop e7 well it's a kind of a small inaccuracy because it allows uh, white to continue with queen g4 but queen g4 wasn't played instead a3 and now with knight f6 black is much much better moreover white continued with f3 b5 is another clever move uh, castling is more accurate but b5 is fine queen d2 another uh, inaccuracy bishop b7 is generally a good move castle and uh, castling here is good a natural move there is a better move of course well this is where i want to ask you what what is your plan well castle yes uh, but what after that or maybe instead of castling you can, su can suggest something uh, immediately this is how you save a tempo on castling this is what actually i prefer if i uh, play an unfamiliar position So please list your candidate moves here. Uh, Milos suggests d5. Can you explain why? What's the logic? Uh, what's uh, what's the point of opening the position right away? Parallax suggests knight d4. Well, so you would like to exchange pieces, but uh, why? Why you want to exchange pieces? Uh, well, I, from this position, I think you guys should uh, understand black is slightly better. Their pieces are more flexible, better located. So exchanging pieces only simplifies the position and uh, makes it closer to equality for white what knight d4 and bishop e6 what do you mean bishop d6 probably well bishop d6 uh, g4 or g3 sorry oh actually actually g4 works as well g3 i think well well parallax this is what actually happened in the game and this exchange wasn't in black favor queen f2 queen takes f2 king f2 and uh, this sicilian end game is uh, well khan or Paulson sicilian end games are usually in white's favor uh, because of uh, better pieces development black uh, could play d5 and just simplify They didn't play it, they instead castle, which was a mistake. It was better to keep the king on in the center with king e7, for example. But that's not the point. Uh, knight d4 is a mistake. You, well, you should coordinate these pieces. Bishop d6 uh, right away, or maybe not uh, right away, just, uh, well, 
f4, maybe g3. So bishop d6 is not well. You can castle first and then play something else, or you can play something else right now. Let me check YouTube. Maybe b4. Uh huh. B4 was suggested. Knight e5. Well, knight e5. Yes. Tim and Eric are correct. So it's either knight e5 or knight a5. So you can castle, and if they play a4, well, maybe d6 first, and then knight a5, knight c4, or while f4 isn't played, you can get your knight to c4 right away. Well, uh, this move is of course a blunder because of these, after which you get rid of the bishop. So, you know, uh, well, it's, it's an exchange, but the bishop is definitely better than the knight. Knight takes a3, queen takes a3, you can take the advantage of the pin, but doesn't matter, you already have a bishop pair. So, knight e5 is the best move. Uh, you also threaten to do this, but I would recommend you to exchange on c4. For example, bishop e2, castle. Let's say they try to attack. h6 is enough. And if h4 in this position, just knight g6, which is a double attack. Um, so, what can I say? Uh, well, uh, Douglas definitely watched my course uh, and uh, learned how to play, uh, but uh, didn't get enough practice to understand typical um, plans. So, this exact line wasn't covered in this course. Uh, because white didn't play properly. So you see white lost the tempo with a3 uh, Bishop on d3 doesn't uh, look good. Queen d2 was a kind of a tempo loss in case if you decide to castle kingside White didn't play properly and uh, Black could apply one of the typical ideas of Paulson Sicilian, which is covered in other lines It's knight e5 knight c4. So that's the best plan. Maybe knight e5 then rook c8 and then knight c4 so instead, uh, without understanding of which uh, plan to follow, they decided to simplify like Parallax suggested. So if you guys think it's logical, I just don't understand why, because, uh, well, well, we simplified, but there is no advantage for black. What's the point? If you want to draw the game, you may play like that. But if you're playing for a win, then... Uh, keep material on the board, try to provoke your opponent to make a mistake, optimize your pieces' locations. Well, what happened then? e5, knight d5, bishop d5, uh, well, here uh, black is still fine. They created a kind of a trap with bishop d5, they capture on c2 first with a check. c3, bishop e4, rook e4, and now we have a backward pawn on d7, and because of this pawn, black lost the game uh, what happened then there was a blockade after which uh, black was forced to exchange the rooks on c6 well yeah in this position they um, should uh, look for a counterplay and play a5 b4 and then enter the second rank that counterplay would allow black to draw the game but instead rook c6 and then they realized that actually because of the weakness on d7 they Exchange the pawn is now on c6 and stops the king. And the white king is quite close to the center. So this end game is winning. Of course, not without mistakes from both players. But finally, they created a distant pass pawn to distract the king, and uh, the white king entered their camp first. Well, yeah, you see, it was a long, long game. Finally, with e5, they made a mistake. Here, king of... King g6, if I'm not mistaken here. Yeah, king g6 is the best move here. Uh, but instead, e5 was played, and the black king is too far from his pawns. White wins. So... Let's go back to the critical moment of the game. 
here black is better and black loses their advantage if they exchange the material but the position becomes equal so you can still uh, play equal position and draw the game but there was a few other mistakes played because of which uh, black lost the game but well you shouldn't exchange if you see you are you're better you should only exchange if it's in your favor uh, if you don't understand whether it's in your favor to exchange pieces right now or not then you'd better uh, refuse any ideas of exchange uh, pieces and try to look for a better move okay guys well do you have actually yeah um actually that was all i wanted to show you today uh what else i would like to share uh-huh first of all i uh published these two new videos on my website i can share the link with you so you can learn how to play against uh, Nidorf and uh, actually i demonstrate typical plans uh, in neither for both for white and black also I, another video about bishop versus knight in which positions bishop is better where knight is better for example if you click on it you can not only watch the video but also find uh, these examples uh, which are directly uploaded from chess.com to my own website well, these are chess.com diagrams they will be uploaded soon uh, well what else the course i was talking about uh, which douglas successfully learned and now applies uh, is uh, this how to defeat white with Pauls and sicilian so i'm going to share the link to this course as well it's actually a long course it's about 12 hours if you are interested or if you have any questions you can always uh, email me at tricksofchess at gmail.com if you are looking for private coaching this is also an option for you and uh, another thing so on youtube i I release my videos faster only then I publish them on my website so if you subscribe to my youtube channel you probably may find uh, my uh, newest uh, video which is called how to defeat a Dr Sicilian dragon sorry about uh, how it's loading I'm using VPN because uh, VPN is the only way to connect um, uh, chess.com from Russia because it's blocked so this video how to defeat sicilian dragon uh, where i explain which line to play with white pieces i explain a yugoslav attack and uh, which exact line of yugoslav attack to play and well it's actually it's a good analysis even for 2200 players so you can subscribe to my youtube channel uh, let me share the link Well, that was all I wanted to share about. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And if not, uh, well, well, see you next Sunday. I am not sure. Uh, well, I, I'm sure it will be a masterclass by f my friend, our coach, Fidel Master from Bulgaria. Who I'm going to announce it a little bit later uh, this week. Um, well, or or i can also conduct a blitz simul i'm not sure what will be uh, first but i think his master class will be quite helpful for most uh, players even for me well thank you for coming and uh, see you next sunday